When I was in eighth grade, we had a career day. I took um, an entomology class. Louise Walzer, who worked for Jefferson Parish Crime Lab, came and spoke to us and um, I got interested in it through that. Well, first I took an anthropology class, the study of skeletons. And then my dad was in law enforcement as well. We had a guest lecturer come from the state crime lab. I kind of got uh, uh, gladly thrown into it. My name is Janae Rausch. I am the senior firearm and tool mark examiner for the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office. I'm Andrea Travis. I'm the quality assurance manager for the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office Crime Lab. We arrive um, at 8 a.m., check if there were any cases overnight that we need to um, get on top of or work quickly, any homicides, any shootings. Um, and then if not, we would just work our regular caseload, um, test fire any weapons, compare um, casings and projectiles to each other on the microscope for normal cases. Crime labs are accredited and what that means is that we have a set of requirements that we um, are, that we have to follow. And my job mainly is to make sure that we are compl in compliance with those requirements. Um, most people think it's a glamorous job. Um, they think that we are out like arresting people and interviewing people and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. They don't realize that a lot of it is in the lab doing scientific work. I have a bachelor's of science in forensic chemistry from the University of Mississippi. Um, I got hired in the lab after I had my undergraduate degree. But while I was working full time, I attended the police academy to become a post certified officer. And then after that, um, I did my master's online. So I have a master's of science. Um, it's in pharmacology, but really it's forensic science. I got my bachelor's of science in medical technology from LSU New Orleans. 2001, I graduated uh, with a master's of science in forensic science and uh, graduated in about May. And then in November, I started here. I think it has become very, very much more popular. Um, like I said, when I went to school, there wasn't a lot of uh, undergraduate uh, or graduate options. There just wasn't. Um, there wasn't a lot of uh, awareness of the field in general. Um, so I think that has definitely changed in the past 10 years to, to a very great extent. Awareness of the field and opportunity to get a to get uh, education in the field, which is a good thing. However, the downside is there's not, in my opinion, there's not um, a lot of job opportunities to support all the interest and the and the popularity of the field and the and the students graduating with degrees in that field. The TV shows, the crime dramas, including the CSI uh, shows, the true documentaries. Um, I think the NAS report uh, raised a lot of uh, interest and concern about the field and just people saying, hey, you know, what, what is there to this forensic um, mm -hmm. stuff that they do? You know, it is interesting. And I think it, it just kind of got overlooked for many years. But now DNA, you know, DNA came around in the, the 80s and really became popular in the 90s. And that changed the ball game a lot. As far as the TV shows such as CSI, I think they're highly sensationalized. Um, they do a lot of things on the show that we are not capable of doing or that don't even exist. Um, they also seem to have a lot more money to do, you know, all these different testings. And of course they get everything done super quick. You know, it'll pop up with a suspect's name quickly for DNA and fingerprints, which um, is not always the case. You know, a glamorous job, out on the streets a lot. Um, you know, like CSI, they all wear high heels and drive Hummers and um, we're just normal people and scientific, a little bit nerdy. There definitely is a CSI effect out there and that, um, especially when you go to court, uh, jurors expect to see forensic results and sometimes they don't understand that that's just not possible. It certainly is not possible in five minutes. Then you go on the stand and you say, oh, I have a master's in pharmacology and they're like, what? But really it's forensic, so. Usually I just say I have a master's of science so they don't ask any more questions. It's a good thing that jurors want to see it. I think they sometimes think that they 
they know what the evidence should mean and should be, and so that's that's kind of negative. My boss, Colonel Tim Scanlon, wrote his thesis on it. I also did a paper on it for my master's, and it's something that we regularly discuss with juries, um, as well as, as I said, the lot tours that come through here in the public just to make them aware of it and make them understand what we actually do and what we can do as compared to the TV shows. They have their own preconceived notion of, you know, you should have fingerprinted this, um, you know, grass to get to get to get a result you know well that doesn't happen and if you don't sometimes their preconceived um notion of what should have been done and that wasn't really scientific scientifically needed or uh could or possible because you didn't do that is a bad thing in their eyes if we had to analyze every single piece of drug evidence that came into the lab uh we'd be in trouble I'd say the majority of firearms evidence that come in comes in gets tested, whereas um, latent print analysis there's a backlog, so it will get tested, but it'll take a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Drugs we don't analyze unless we get a request from the district attorney's office. We have it; it's you know it, it's secure at all times, and if we need to test it, you know three years from now we can, but we don't test it until the the person is actually being charged or the case is going to court. Once we talk to people and inform them um, of the realities of forensic science, they understand and are more willing to accept it as opposed to if you don't address it at all. Uh, I think another um, result of the CSI effect, the CSI shows and the, and the interest in the field is that they think forensics is a reliable um, science and techniques and results. So when they do see forensics, forensic evidence, um, they believe in it. I don't watch any of the fictional shows. Uh, every once in a while I'll watch like a 48 hours or a real crime show, but not CSI or no, Bone. I know I can't watch that. Um, I am not opposed to the crime, to the shows, and I don't, I don't not watch them for any particular reason. It's just not my, I guess, my genre of shows. I like, you know, the home, the home channel and the cooking channel and, uh, you know, Scandal. So. I like Dexter. I guess that is a crime show. I, I do like Dexter. Friends, uh, students that they think it's a very glamorous, exciting day-to-day -day job. And while it does have its exciting parts of it, and there, there are many, um, I think a lot of people don't realize the um, monotonous day-to-day -day stuff. You know, a lot of paperwork, a lot of uh, requirements, a lot of um, uh, nitty-gritty stuff. It's not the exciting um, stuff you see on CSI. But it is a fun job. Every day is different, um, so it doesn't get boring. But I think you... Um, do have to be willing to leave nowadays to, to pursue a job. And there are jobs out there, um, but that's one thing I suggest to people.